Hey, welcome to Science Yon. In today's video, we are going to talk about Newton's second law of motion. So let's get right into the topic. In the video about the first law of motion, we have seen the simple case where there is no net external force acting on the body. But here in the second law of motion, we are going to see what happens when there is an external force acting on the body. At first, we have to consider a quantity called momentum. So what is momentum? Momentum of a body is defined to be the product of its mass m and velocity v and is denoted by p. p is equal to m into v, where m is the mass of the body and v is the velocity of the body. Momentum is a vector quantity, which means it has magnitude and direction. If you drop two stones from the top of a building, one very light and the other very heavy, the person on the ground will find it easier to catch the light stone than the heavy stone. Why is that? If we take two light stones of the same mass and then throw one stone slowly and the other fastly, then we can find that the faster stone is difficult to catch. So why is that? So in these two cases, we can see that it is difficult to catch a stone when it is thrown faster and also when it is heavier. This is due to the momentum of the stone increasing. The momentum of a stone increases when either the mass or velocity of the stone increases. That is, as we have seen in the equation, the momentum of a body depends on the mass and velocity of the body. If you are familiar with the game of cricket, you can see that when a professional cricketer tries to catch a ball, he draws in his hands backward in the act of catching the ball. So why does he do that? We have seen in the above example that it hurts when the velocity is greater or when the mass is greater, which means that it requires greater force to stop a body when there is greater velocity and mass. So what else does force depend on? If the cricketer tries to stop the ball instantly, his hands will hurt, but if he tries to stop it slowly, taking enough time, he will be less hurt, which means he can reduce the amount of force required to stop the ball. So we can conclude that force not only depends on the change in momentum, but also on how fast the change was brought about. The greater the rate of change of momentum, the greater is the force. Consider two bodies of different masses. If the same force is applied on the two bodies for the same interval of time, then the bodies acquire the same momentum. Thus, the same force for the same time causes the same change in momentum for different bodies. We can come to the equation and the statement of the second law of motion, but before that, consider another case. Till now, we considered cases where the change in momentum and the momentum have the same direction. Now let's consider a case where the magnitude of momentum is unchanged but its direction is changed. Suppose you rotate a stone with a uniform speed in a horizontal plane by means of a string. Here the magnitude of the momentum is fixed but its direction changes. The force which causes the change in the direction of momentum is provided by our hand through the string. So the second law of motion is stated as the rate of change of momentum of a body is directly proportional to the applied force and takes place in the direction in which the force acts. So if the initial momentum of the body is p is equal to m into u and the final momentum is p is equal to m into v, then the change in momentum is delta p is equal to m into v minus u. So the rate of change of momentum can be written as m into v minus u by t or dp by dt if t is the time during which this change of momentum took place. So the second law of motion is given by f is proportional to dp by dt. We can write f is equal to k into ma where k is a constant of proportionality. Since the unit of force has not been defined so far, we have the freedom to choose any constant value for k. For simplicity, we take k is equal to 1. So we have f is equal to dp by dt is equal to ma. The SA unit of force is Newton. So let us note some important points about the second law. In the second law, f is equal to zero implies a is equal to zero. Therefore, second law is obviously consistent with the first law. The second law of motion is a vector law. This means that if a force is not parallel to the velocity of the body, but make some angle with it, it changes only the component of velocity along the direction of force. The component of velocity normal to the force remains unchanged. The force F in the law stands for the net external force acting on a particle and A stands for acceleration of that particle. But the law in the same form applies also to a rigid body or even more generally to a system of particles. In that case, F refers to the total external force on the system and A refers to the acceleration of the system as a whole. The second law of motion is a local relation which means that 
for set a point in a space a certain instant of time is related to a at that point at that instant so that's all about newton's second law of motion if you find this video informative please click the like button comment share and subscribe see you in another video thanks for watching